Oh, hi. You, you okay? Yeah, so, bad news, you've died. We're just taking you into limbo now to be processed. Shouldn't be too long, maybe a couple of thousand years, but honestly it'll just fly by. I know what question you're going to ask, and no, there is no meaning of life, get over yourselves. However, you probably want to know about the things that are a mystery to your species. What's beyond the stars you can see at night? Where does it all go? What happens at the end? What is nothingness? Well... Oh, we're here. So, I have a question for you. What does your in limbo look like? And do you think you could just go out and find it? Well, that's my plan now. Let's see how I do. All right. I'm Marcus Welsh, and I use books, articles, websites, and your emails to investigate, discuss, and go on adventures. And if you can tell me what this video is all about, then that would be really helpful. Thank you. If you do get any enjoyment out of this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye. So I came across this article, Why Do Liminal Spaces Feel Like an Altered Reality? I hadn't heard of liminal spaces until I came across this, despite there being a good many articles and YouTube videos about the subject. This is a liminal space. It's an image that seems a bit weird, gives you 50% a deep, nostalgic melancholy and 50% a sense of dread. It's a transitional place, like you've been there before and you'll be there again one day. It's like your old life has gone, and you only retain a fleeting memory of it. In fact, I wouldn't even call it a memory. It's just a feeling. This famous example looks like a 70s wallpaper post-death waiting room. It's like the start of a never-ending maze, a labyrinth of futility. You turn one corner to find it looks the same, but the feeling washes over you again anew. It reminds me of those old first-person shooter games like Doom, where you'd scroll through endless walls in the same pattern. You think you're exploring and finding new areas, when all you're really doing is going in a circle, ending up where you started. And isn't that a good metaphor for life? I guess a true liminal space has to remind you of something that you do know. There are so many images of empty shopping malls, waiting rooms, bedrooms and long mazy corridors. But when we see them like this, empty, with a lower image quality, that's where it enters the uncanny valley zone. So, that's a liminal space described about as basic as I can. Carrot? You know what, I think it's probably the perfect place to start for the search for my in limbo here on Earth. So let's explore it a bit further. I'm going to ignore the weird feeling you get from most of these images because a lot of things give you a weird feeling. It's that associated nostalgia and melancholy that goes with it. That's what I'm interested in here. But, ah! Any time a nostalgic feeling comes up, so does sadness. You can't remember those good times without a melancholic desire to live there again, even if it's just for a bit. That's how nostalgia works. It's... it's a trap, really. It's happiness with a sheen of sadness. It's all your memories, your photos, your family holidays, your school days. It's your experiences tinged in sepia, completely unreachable, as the sad truth of reality and adulthood take over. The issue I find with most of these images is that they are very US-centric, and obviously, I'm from the UK. So these American suburbs or lifeless Chuck E. Cheeses are not something we can feel the full pull of nostalgia for. I even have a slight advantage in that I lived there for a year when I was younger, and we all have the bias of films and TV shows set in the US too. You two get out of the way. So, let's do a bit of an experiment. Most of the liminal spaces I've shown you so far are from US sources, and most of the videos and information you can find online are from US sources. And the theory is that no matter where these images come from, if these really are places we've been between worlds, the same sense of nostalgia and unease should still exist. So I've put together a collection of images from the UK. My question to you is, do you feel nostalgic for some of these? 
Do you feel like you've been here before, even if you've never lived or even been to the UK? And for the UK viewers, did you feel it for the American images I showed you before? Or is this possibly all just a load of old nonsense? Let me know, yeah? I'm going to break all the rules of YouTube now. I'm going to leave some time and space in a video. Nothing's really going to happen for a few minutes. Images will flash by slowly with some music in the background. But for this experiment to work, I need your patience with it. Your ability to immerse yourself in something is crucial. That way we can see how you really feel about these images. So the plan for this video originally was to go out and find my liminal space here in the wild, which is what I called the outside since Pokemon Yellow. But I can't because of Covid. I can't be bothered, it's cold. So instead I've got to use my imagination, which is really annoying. But I've also looked through some old video and photo collections, which has been fun. I came to an early conclusion my liminal shot would be in a supermarket car park at night in around 2004. I'd be sitting in my friend's Rover Metro, in the car park where we used to work. A group of us all drinking blue WKDs. Girlfriends would come and go just as I would come and go to them. We hold hands on the incapacitated adjustment for the passenger seat. Our ages a restriction from the pubs and the clubs that have since betrayed us. There was something of a liminal space about it then. We're used to seeing our workplace in the day, full of life and activity but it's now dormant in the darkness, with only the supermarket light flickering on and off, all in the haze of our intoxication. It may be a liminal space to me, but it can't be my in limbo. It can't be my place between worlds. It hasn't got that sense of dread. There's too much happy nostalgia. So surely the best liminal space I've ever had is in my own head, in my imagination somewhere. Music is the ultimate creator of feelings, of memories. It makes you laugh, makes you cry. A liminal space can be music because music creates space. However, for this to work, I feel like there is one key rule. The music that gives the liminal aesthetic must be new to you. That is to say, it puts you in a nostalgic frame of mind despite it not occurring within that nostalgic time. So to understand the feeling of nostalgia music gives you, and to solidify how that feels in my head, I'm going to listen to a song that will put me right back into the days I'm nostalgic for. The song Week Become Heroes by The Streets puts me back to the mid-2000s every time I hear it. To get in the mood even further, I thought I'd attend a rave via my green screen. So to look the part, I need to wear some tatty clothes, so I've got my Welsh Twins merch on, and some really, really stupid glasses. And full respect for those people that do sort of reaction videos where they sit listening to music, because I just felt like a tit this whole time. What's happening here is the music's lighting up my brain's visual cortex. It means as I'm hearing the song, I'm starting to associate it with the memories. The memories in our formative years are already stronger. These are the times that shape us, make us, destroy us. Therefore, the music that is with us at the time is only down the road on that same neural pathway. Every time we hear it and reminisce, it strengthens that bond even further. And that feeling is coming over me now, the memories. And I just don't understand how I can feel this same way for songs that weren't with me during that time. The songs e by Orteca, Free by Aphex Twin, and the whole Burial Untrue album gives me a longing for a time I think I had, but the music sounds like memory, fading like the photo image quality, unclear, unobtainable. I'm nostalgic for no particular memory and yet simultaneously all of them at once. 
as sometimes these weird new music nostalgia blasts can come from the most unexpected places. There is a royalty free song that is on so many different YouTube videos. It's the chilled out equivalent of deep trance music when you're watching a PC tutorial. When I first heard these opening bars, I was back in that car park in the Rover Metro 2004. The song's called Good For You by THBD. Did it give you any weird feelings? Maybe not, but going through the comments it seems I'm not alone. This sound makes me remember the good times of the past with other people. It's incredible how music can open your mind sometimes. I concur. Right, not only music, spirit too. Music is the emotional layer. You're not kidding, makes you feel young again. I'm glad everyone here feels like me. This track gives me chills. It makes me imagine myself alone in a car driving while I remember my loved ones away from me. This song reminds me of when we were young, how we used to play at the park. Love it. This gives me a lot of happy nostalgia for some reason. After a year, I listened this song. I hate this from the bottom of my heart. I'm so tired of hearing it. Yeah, yeah. James, hurry, my dear, love, go on then, go on. There still isn't a scientific consensus, but I actually know what's going on, so I've worked it out, so don't worry about it. You might have worked it out yourself. Do you all have a place that's kind of recurring? And I don't mean the same thing keeps happening. I mean it's like a city or a town or a shape, a sound or a feeling. It's just something that keeps cropping up. And it's kind of the same every time, but with the odd subtle changes. You'll see it over and over in many different ways. I have a city. It's huge, it's got a coast, shopping areas, motorways. Bits of it look like my old hometown, mixed with other towns I've lived. It contains all my fears, my regrets, my dreams, my desires. There's a reason you have this. We all have it, whether you know it or not. I read this article discussing quantum immortality. The theory is, when we die in one reality, we dimension shift to a new one that is as close to the last one as possible. Of course, with a parallel universe, all possibilities exist as it's infinite. So perhaps you jump into a universe where, say, a leaf outside is no longer there, something very small. Or perhaps you jump into one where the Monopoly man no longer has a monocle. What, you think the Mandela effect is just coincidence? So, how many times have you died before? Mm, probably the amount of times you've had deja vu. So here's what dreams are, they tie it all together. Reality as we perceive it, isn't how it actually is. The brain is a pattern making machine, and it likes to make shit up. The dream is actually trying to make sense of all your lives so far. It's trying to trick your memories into consistency, by being totally inconsistent. Yes, the shop you used to buy your sweets from when you were young was called Martin's, but in this new reality it's called John's. The dream is there to go. Maybe it was called that. Who knows? I don't know. Here's a dinosaur. Dreams are both memory storage machines and memory confusion machines. Have you ever seen that video deconstructing people's thoughts whilst on an MRI? Basically, they recorded the brain watching movie trailers remembered the patterns and recreated what they watched based on those patterns using a massive clip library. That's a very simple explanation for it. The link, of course, is below for the study. It's actually its own living, moving, liminal space. And so you think if they can do this, one day they will be able to record dreams, right? So what am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that dreams are the limbo. I'm trying to say that when we die, the only trace of this quantum immortality, this dimension shift is inside our own heads, when we have no control over what we are thinking, when we are in dream state. Or, like it's nothing like that at all, I don't know. Don't ask me, huh? You ever dreamt about your old school when you were younger? It's always weird, isn't it? I went to an old Victorian 
school, Victorian in its architecture, but even the teaching seems slightly archaic, and I don't know why. We would sing hymns, morning is broken, give me oil in my lamp, he's got everybody here in his hands. It's like my life and school life happened in different eras, and it was in the school hall where everything happened. Assembly, PE, lunch, harvest festival, Christmas nativities, but when I dream about it, I am in the old big school hall, but it's always empty. It's always dark, and not dark dark like nighttime dark, like it's about to rain dark, the grey clouds shifting daylight away dark. I can smell what was lunch lingering in the air, pasties, beans, cold chips. The gym equipment is still there, folded away, the big climbing frame, ropes, the balance beam I once fell nuts first onto, the mats we had to pull out of the cupboard while the other half of the class stacked the chairs and the benches at the side of the room. It's just me there. In the middle of the room, sitting cross-legged. I know there were doors, a fire exit one side, and big double doors that led back to the school. But if they were present in this dream, they didn't want to make themselves known. They feel too far away in both time and space. The memory of our teacher dancing on her own to Enya feels too far away. The day I split my eyebrow open on a desk, it's too far away. Lever's Disco, Year 6. Girls one side of the room, boys on the other. It's too far away. And here's the actual school gate. Repaired since, everything looks new and shiny, but it would on the outside. This gate leads to my limbo. It's the gate I cross as I cross between worlds. Do you think you can find your limbo here, on Earth, in our reality? Where are you destined to be between worlds? Thank you for watching. Don't forget to rewind the tape before you take it back.